Hello, my name is Andrew Lamb, and I wanted to sh do, uh, give a brief demo of how to capture some profiling information using flame graphs. I previously showed how to use instruments, and I thought another technique while I'm profiling data fusion that I often use is flame graphs, and I wanted to show how to, to do that. So in this case, I have a particular query that I want to know how it's spending its time. So if you can see, I have, uh, I have a file here that has a query. This is the SQL query, and I can run that with data fusion CLI, and it will take about six seconds, I believe. And what I would like to do is figure out where this program is spending its time, like where are those six seconds going? Uh, the exact thing of what it's doing maybe is not all that relevant right now, but I just wanted to show the technique. So what I would do is I would install the, the tool called Flame Graph, which you can do from the Rust cargo command using cargo install flame graph. I've already installed it. If you hadn't already installed it, it would take a moment, a minute or two to install. But now once you have it, there's a flame graph command, uh, which is quite cool. So what the flame graph command will do is you can actually just run the same command you, you previously run, but now you can run, I'll just put flame graph in front of it. And I'll push dash dash so it says treat the rest of it as options. And what this is going to do now, uh, I'm sorry, you actually have to do sudo, and you need to spell that correctly. On the Mac, you have to run it as uh, super user due to security concerns. What this will do is it'll run the same command, but it'll profile the command and generate what's called a flame graph. So we're going to run it again, and you can see it's running the same uh, program that it that it did previously. It took about the same amount of time, 6.5 seconds. But it also, you'll notice it says it wrote to a flame graph, a flame graph FTPG. So what we can do is we can look in here. You can actually see flame graph STV is there. So we'll just open that. And here is what's called a flame graph. It's flame, I think, because it's colored, you know, red, orange, whatever. Uh, but what it, this is is it's a visual representation of the stack traces of the program as it was running. So in this case, it looks like uh, the program took 85,000 samples, so 85,000 times during execution. It uh, looked at what the stack trace was, and then it has summarized all that data into this visualization. So the way to look at it is the horizontal width of a particular bar is the relative amount of time that was spent in that bar. So in this case, like 70% of the samples, and in this case that means 70% of the time, was spent in whatever this you know, physical uh, aggregates means. So you know, it was 75% of the samples. So that means you know, approximately 70% of the runtime probably is in uh, spent doing whatever is happening here. So uh, let's say, for in fact, in this case, you can see this all looks sort of like it's related to regular expressions, and, and about 70% of this particular query is spent just evaluating a, a regular expression predicate. But let's say I would, I, this particular case, I happen to be interested in what's going on here. And so what you can do is you can, like, if you, see, you can't really see it, all the t text is compressed. What's really cool is these images somehow are interactive. I don't really know how that works, but it's great. So you can actually click on one of these. Like, let's say I care about what's happening here. And what that'll do is actually zoom in to that particular thing you clicked on. And now it's still showing the same overall percentage right here. It only says 7%. But it'll show you how that's broken down as rescaled the x-axis. So in this case, I can look up and say, oh, well, you know, what was basically unreadable before, I can see now it's broken down into, you know, 80% of the, of that time is spent doing stuff over here, and then 20% is over here. And in this case, it looks because of uh, what I know about how this is implemented, you know, 80% of the time is spent reading Parquet, and then some amount of time is actually filtering uh, over here. And you can actually, zo you know, I can again, I can zoom in, like let's say just a small, I really cared about what uh, was happening here. It can zoom in and you can actually sort of zoom in even farther, right? Zoom in wherever you want. And then when you're done, you can reset and you go back to the main thing. And so from there, now you can spend time evaluating and trying to figure out how to make, you know, whatever is being called faster or not being called as much or whatever, which that's, that's the art optimization. But this is the way you get the data to begin. So hopefully that's helpful. Happy hacking. I'd love it if you spent uh, some of your time, you know, evaluating traces in data fusion and trying to figure out ways to make it faster. It's always a plug. We always got to get people help. But anyway, thank you very much.